day before Easter. But the weather and everything else has been a little bit inconsistent. Um, we did fill up all the eggs, so there's a few eggs out there. So after church today, we're going to spread some eggs out there and let the children go out there and get some candy. So just want to let you know. So if you decide you want to leave quickly, please be careful. The kids will be out in the back half and up the side. And, uh, so just be careful. So I'm gonna, that song that we ended on, what's your future? Think about it. What is your future? Where is it you want to go? What is it you want to do? And I love that song. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. And as it says, are you ready for a breakthrough? In my life, I want there to be more peace, more joy, more love, more strength. You know, sometimes it's easy to say, oh, I have peace, but I'm tossing and turning. It's easy to say, well, I have peace, but I'm just not happy. I truly want to move forward with all that God has for me. I want a major breakthrough. So that's the title of this message is Moving Forward with God. Moving Forward with God. So I was, as I was putting this together, it hit me. I remember when I was 16, I'm driving down this road, and this huge deer jumps out. And I missed it. And I was like, man, that could have been bad. And I look back, I'm like, where'd it go? And then I see this big deer running back. And as I'm looking at it running, I hit the next one. <laughs> Didn't know there was two. But why did I hit that one? Because I was looking back at the one that I missed. I'm looking backwards. And I'm celebrating. Oh, that could have been bad. That was close call. And I'm celebrating. And as I'm looking back, I'm hitting something in front. And sometimes in life, I find myself looking back instead of moving forward. Sometimes we look back at where we've been and what we've done and who we was. And we're going to get to all that. But I want to train myself at how to go forward, looking at the future. The best way to start that is in Luke chapter 9, verse 62. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. You see, this is what I love about the Bible. This has no historic bearing. This is just Jesus saying, stop looking backwards. So let me ask you this. Have you ever started to get on the move of going forward and you look back to say, you know what, I, I used to be lazy or I, I used to have no discipline or I used to be this or I used to be that. And sometimes it stops us from moving forward. We start to think about who we was and what we'd done. And sometimes it paralyzes us from moving forward. Jesus said, stop looking backwards. And I know some people say, well, you got to look backwards so you don't make the same mistakes that you move forward. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later. But Jesus simply says, you put two hands on the plow to move forward, then keep going forward. I mean, it's fair to say if you got two hands here and you look back, you see how that front goes that way? Or you look back this way? You start to get off track. Jesus wants us to move forward. We have to move forward. And I, I was reading something this week, and I liked the things I was reading. This one said this. Somehow, the lie of the old seems to envelop our souls. The fact is, the enemy of our souls knows if he can keep us looking back, we would make little progress in the future God has for us. See, if we look forward and not backwards, we can unlock all the things God has for us. But sometimes we look backwards and say, well, we used to do it like this. But that was then. That's gone. Well, we used to do it this way. That's gone. Go forward. See, that's how I opened up this morning. We don't, we don't like where we are sometimes. We want to move forward. In order to move forward, there has to be change. Stop looking backwards. Stop looking backwards. Sometimes my wife and I were like, oh, well, we used to do it like this. We, we got out of that habit. We might have done it that way, but that doesn't mean it was the best way. Sometimes you have to open up the change and do it differently. Because if you're looking backwards, you can't go forward. Remember, Jesus is the one that said, stop looking backwards. 
without looking backwards. If the enemy wants us to look back and God wants us to move forward, why do we still do it? Think about that. The enemy says, well, look back what you used to do. See, here's what happens. You look back on what you used to do, and then you complain about how things are being done now. When you look back, you can't look forward. But why do we do it? Well, I start processing this. I came up with a few things within my life. I could be afraid of what's going to happen. Sometimes it's hard to look forward because I'm afraid of what's going to happen. Am I going to make it? What if it fails? I can be afraid that I might not make it. Sometimes I don't move forward because I'm afraid I might not make it. Have you ever been in a situation you're afraid it's not going to work out so you don't try? But I don't know if this is going to work out because I did it before and it failed. Uh, You're looking backwards. And when you're looking backwards, it stops you from going forward. I could be afraid that I might fail again. If you fail again, you fail again. The just man, a just man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. But sometimes we look back and say, oh, well, I, I did that and I failed and I'm afraid to fail again, so I don't want to do it. I hear people say that a lot. I know I've done it. We can be afraid to let others down, even God. I don't want to let them down again. I don't want to let somebody down. I don't want to try. I don't want to move forward because I might let them down. Keep moving forward. You see, the enemy wants you to look back. The enemy wants you to reflect on what you did. The enemy wants you to reflect on who you was. Well, who I was is I'm no longer that person anymore. What I did back then is no longer what I do. Now, that could be the problem. If what I used to do and I'm still doing it, then that's the problem. Because God wants us to be new. The past can cause us to have doubts. So we fear tomorrow. Have you ever feared tomorrow because you have doubts of how it was going to work? I have doubts sometimes. When they said, hey, go down to Cincinnati and start a new church. I was like, well, if it doesn't work, God says, I just asked you to go do it. You let me decide if it's going to work or not. Well, if I fail, I'm going to look bad. If I fail, I'm going to let people down. I tried things before and it didn't work. I'm looking backwards. God says, stop looking backwards. Move forward. Well, this is, what, this is the way I was brought up. This is what I used to do. This is the way that I'm accustomed to doing it. God says, stop looking back. It's time for change. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. It's a new horizon. I want us to experience a new horizon. And that means letting go of everything we used to do, how we used to do it, and moving forward. I want to move forward with God. Sometimes I think about my past. You ever think about your past mistakes? You ever think, well, it's hard to move forward because I messed up here. Well, the one thing I want us to understand is, number one, you've been forgiven. Because you've been forgiven, you can move forward. God loves you, and because he loves you, you can move forward. You're saved, and because you're saved, you can move forward. But sometimes this is a verse Two verses that I reflect on more than you know. They're both out of Hebrews. One's out of Hebrews 8. One's out of Hebrews 10. Hebrews 8 says this, 8, 12. I will forgive their wickedness. I will never again remember their sins. Think about that. God says, I am going to forgive Anthony of all his wicked deeds and all his wickedness, and I will never remember it again. And then in Hebrews 10, 17, basically says the same thing. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. So when you start thinking, well, I did this, God says, I don't remember that. Why are you still remembering it? Well, I failed and I did it this way. And God says, but you repented. You've asked for forgiveness. I don't see it anymore. Why do you remember it? You see, the enemy's good. He says, hey, remember when you did this and it didn't work? Remember when you tried this and it failed? Remember you used to be made fun of because you was this. Or remember they used to make fun of you back in middle school because you was different. And we look back and that hurt and that pain comes forward all over again. God says, I don't remember it. And if so the enemy sometimes brings up my past. My past was very ugly. 
and sometimes it comes up. But I look at the enemy and I say, you know what? I say, God, do you remember it? He says, no, I don't remember it. And I look at the enemy and says, if God doesn't remember it, I'm not going to remember it, and I'm not going to let you remind me of it. I don't have to remember who I was. I don't have to think about who I was. I don't have to think about the hurt that I used to have because I'm moving forward. We all been hurt. We all been stepped on. We all been abused. We all been accused of things. We all been made fun of. We all been bullied. Some people were the bully. We all did bad things and had bad things happen to us. Let it go. It's not who you are anymore. And if you still hold on to it, you can't move forward. I want to let that garbage go, and I want to move forward. God wants us to move forward because there's a new day, there's a new tomorrow. But here's the problem. The problem is we tend to remember the things we should forget and forget the things we should remember. Think about that. We remember the things we should forget. Sometimes it, you ever say, well, I, I don't think about it no more, but you can remember every detail of what happened to you or how you was made fun of or how people abused you. You can remember in detail, but you forget how to move forward. God says, forget that, but remember how to move forward. The things that was in the past are in the past. The things I did before is gone. I can't undo it. I don't want to repeat it. I want to move forward. God has more for us than we could ever think or imagine. Keep your eyes on him. I ask people all the time, what is it you want to do? Where do you want to go? I ask that for a reason. Because you got to start putting in your mind of the future and where God's leading you. I don't want, well, I used to do this, or we used to do this, or I used to hang around this person, or this person used to come around. Quit thinking in the past. The past is the past. The enemy has you looking in the past because you think you can't look forward. If I'm looking back, I can't look forward. Remember the deer? If I would have kept my eyes forward, I probably would have missed that one too. And then I'd have been like, wow, two of them. Now I hit the third one. You know, who knows? <laughs> but we have to stay looking forward. Shut the door on the past. You know, to me, there's life in that. There's sometimes I want to think about the past, and I get sad. There's been times I want to think about the past, and it hurts to the point I want to cry. And God says, why are you doing that? That's not who you are anymore. That's not where you are anymore. I'm taking you to someplace new. I'm taking you to someplace better, someplace different. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. So we have to let that go. There has to be a thought process of moving forward. Sometimes that thought process is, and this is, this is a powerful statement. It's a statement that you've all heard, but it's a powerful statement. I am a child of God. It's easy just to say it, but when you reflect on it, a child of God. Think about your children. Your children, you love them. You will do anything for them. You will give your life for them if you have to. You will be there for them every moment. I'm a child of God. He loves me. He loves me. He's always there to help me. He knows my fears. He knows my failures. He knows my faults. He knows my disappointments. He knows all those things. And he says, come on, son. I got something better for you. Don't worry about that. Let that go. Let that go. There's nothing better than the father grabbing you by the hand saying, let that go. And let's go forward. Let's move forward. Yeah, you made mistakes and people laughed at you and you was made fun of and, you know, those things happen. But let's move forward. Let's move forward. Because then Philippians 3.13, this is the goal. But I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Focus on one thing. What's the one thing we can focus on? Forgetting the past. I don't want to say, well, we used to do this, or I used to do this. I remember when. Yeah, those were good days. I had a lot of good days. I had a lot of bad days, but I can't relive them. Let them go. I want to focus on where God's taking me. So when I ask the question, where are you going? What's God want to do for you? If the answer is, I don't know. 
Are you still stuck in the past? If you know where you're going, you forget where you came from. If you know where you're going, you know you've been forgiven. You know you've been delivered. You know you've been freed. You know he has a plan for you. And you say, this is where I want to go. So, but sometimes I say, this is where I want to go. But maybe in order for me to get there, I need to get rid of this. Or I need to get rid of this. Or I need to change this. That's vision right there. Sometimes we know we can't go forward carrying the baggage that we've been holding on to. Sometimes to move forward, i got to change my thought process. And that's why I want to fix my eyes on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Even as you're going through trials, I don't want to focus on that. Because sometimes you've ever been like, man, I didn't been here before. I didn't been through this trial before. I didn't been through this kind of pain before. I didn't been through this same situation before. And God says, yeah, you've been through it, but don't worry about it because I got something new for you. I got something different. Quit focusing on what you used to do. Quit focusing on how it used to turn out. The way it used to turn out was bad, but you know what? It's going to be good this time. If we fixate on what we used to experience, then we're anticipating again, and we go into it with a negative mindset. Matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, this is the ultimate goal. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Have we become a new person? I don't want to be just a cleaned up version. I want to be new. I don't want to be a little bit better. I want to be new. I don't want to take what I was and who I was and, and not doing 50% of it. I want to be all new. In order to be new, you have to get rid of the old. You got to get rid of the old mindset. You got to get rid of the old thoughts. You got to get rid of the old habits. You got to get rid of the old practices. You got to get sometimes some of the old friends you got to get rid of. Sometimes you got to get rid of the old establishments and places that you used to go. All things become new. This means anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Watch this. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. God wants to create a new life in us. We can't express or experience that new life if we keep looking in the past and bringing it forward. New life. I guess that's why it's New Life Church. God wants us to have new life. Never saw it like that, but I guess that's what he wants us to do. He wants us as people to forget about what we did. He says, I love you. I've forgiven you. You're saved. You're freed. Don't worry about it. There's something new on the horizon. There's something better that's coming. So as I was putting this together, I, I came across a passage, and this was a mind-blowing passage. It's from Isaiah 43, 15. The reason why I'm using this is sometimes we say, well, I used to do blank, blank, blank. Or I used to be this. Because if we feel like if we remember what we used to be, then it reminds us of where we are now. But watch this. I am the Lord, your holy one, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt. And with all of its chariots and horses, I drew them beneath the waves, and they drowned. And drowned their lives, snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. So the people of Israel was reflecting. I remember when God delivered us. I remember when God opened the seas, and, and God drowned them, and God set armies, and he delivered us, and he freed us. And we're not talking about that, but I can say, I remember I used to be an alcoholic. I, used to, I remember I used to be on drugs. I, I remember I used to have anger issues. I remember I used to cheat. I used to lie. I used to steal. But God changed me. But watch this. This is the part that I loved. In Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, God says, but forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. God says, yeah, you was freed and you was changed, but forget that because I got something new for you. I want to forget all of that because he has something new. He's taken me in a direction that I'd never been before. He's taken me to a place that I'd never experienced before. He's taken me to a place of joy, a place of love, a place of hope, a place of strength that I never had before. Let's be honest. We all want strength to do something.
don't we? To maybe have better self-confidence. To maybe have better self-discipline. Maybe to have a better mental health. We all want something. And God says, just forget about what you used to be because I got something new for you. If there's anything today, be excited for what he has. Be excited for where he wants to take you. Not only be excited, but be willing to give up things that stand in the way of where you're going. Don't reflect on what you used to be and what you used to do. And that, well, that's one of the biggest things I always talk about in testimony. Sometimes people give a testimony and says, oh, I was bad and I was horrible, but then I see I was saved and I was good. That's, that's a beginning. That's just a beginning. What's God doing now? What's he doing in your life now? Where is he leading you? Where is he taking you? How is he doing it? How has your life changed? I don't really want to necessarily talk about what I did. I want to talk about what I'm doing and where I'm going. That's the power right there. That's the power of a testimony. That's why he says, but forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. And sometimes I just have to say, okay, God, what do you want to do? That right there gives you excitement of getting up every morning. If you really believe this, and you get it in your heart, and you go to bed and say, okay, God, what do you want to do tomorrow? And you really do get excited, you might hit that snooze button one time less. To the point you might hit that snooze button two times less. If you're a three-button snooze button hitter, it might be only once this time. <laughs> to the point you're so excited, you get up before your alarm goes off. Could be true. If you really get excited about getting up, getting in his word, and seeing what he has for you, open up a Bible plan. Get a Bible plan of what's new, what's on the horizon, what does God want to do? You start to ask yourself, what does God want to speak to your life? Be excited about getting up and getting in it. You get up, you get in it, you're excited for what he's going to do. He goes on and says, for I'm about to do something new. He says, see, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in a dry wasteland. See, here's what God's looking at him. He says, you know what, I did all that, and I'm glad you remember it, but forget it, because I got something better. You're going to experience a trial tomorrow, next week, next month. There's going to be some hardships that lie ahead of you. But God says, I already made a path through it. Trust me. We have meltdowns. Why do we have meltdowns? Because we look at our situation and we stop looking at God. Sometimes I have a meltdown and God says, why are you having a meltdown? Oh, we have these conversations. He said, didn't I tell you it was going to be hard? Didn't I tell you it was going to fall apart? Didn't I tell you bad things was going to happen? But didn't I tell you I was going to carry you through? Sometimes I have to remind myself. I have to remind myself. And when I remind myself, I know I'm going to make it. God says, forget all that. I'm preparing a great thing. This excites me. It keeps me stayed focused on his vision. His vision. He's going to do something new in my life if I keep moving forward. But when we're looking back, even at the good things, we can miss what's up ahead. Have you ever been kind of looking somewhere else instead of keeping your eyes on the road and you miss your turn? You ever been like, huh, I'm looking at this house, I'm looking at that yard, I'm looking at what's over here, and you miss your turn? God says, keep your eyes forward. You won't miss your turn. Don't get distracted. See, we, we, we talk about that, but yet, what distractions do we have? Oh, this vacation could be a distraction. Or, or this new job could be a distraction. Those things are good in themselves, but they can also keep you distracted with what God's doing in your life. If you stay focused on what God's doing in your life, when he adds those things to you, it makes it even better. So I want to finish with this verse. This, this verse had me really thinking. Sometimes you ever think about the past. You ever think about what you used to do, who you used to be? You think about some of the negative things? Watch this. And I, I wrote this from the King James Version. It captures a little bit cleaner. Than the living. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
If I think in my heart of what negative things I did, what negative things I said, what bad things I experienced, if I continuously think about the past, chances are that's what I become again. And then you say, well, that's just me. That's what I've always done. That's who I am. God says, no. Start thinking about the good things. Start thinking about love. Start thinking about peace. Start thinking about a new beginning. Start thinking about a future. You get up and you put the word of God in your heart. My thought processes can lead me astray. But God's word keeps me on point. Sometimes I can say, well, I think God wants me to do this. And he's like, no, that's the furthest thing from the truth. That's what you think, but what I want is you to do this. His word gives us direction. Why do you think in Psalms it says your, your light is a path to my guide or is a guide to my feet? God's word is your path. It takes you in tomorrow. I just want us to be excited of where he's leading us. I want you to really think about where God wants to take you. And then really process giving up that future or giving up the past. Giving up what you used to be. Have you ever said, well, I've always been stubborn. I'm just always going to be stubborn. God says, why are you doing that? You used to be stubborn, but I want you to stop being stubborn. I used to be a hothead. I'm always going to be a hothead. No. Stop being a hothead. Stop thinking like that. Well, this is what I've always been. This is what I've always done. This is the way. We, and if you start getting into that mindset of what you always did, what you always used to do, what you used to be, you'll never see the future of what he wants to do. We need to stop looking back and looking forward. God, what do you want to do? What do you want me to change? Sometimes it's not a matter of going out and doing something, but maybe it's a matter of changing in your heart. Stop thinking differently. Start thinking differently. Start having a different mindset on how you think. We have to move forward. So we're going to have prayer. As we go to prayer and we're thinking about moving forward, I ask this question. Are you stuck? Do you feel stuck? Is God speaking to you about moving forward? Sometimes I do believe some people want to move forward, but they just don't know how. Stay in the word. Call me. We'll talk. Move forward. Move forward with God. The past is the past. Let all things be new. Stop focusing on what you used to do. How things used to be. Start thinking of new. Look at the new horizon. Look at the new you that God wants you to have. Maybe God wants nothing more than you to have more peace more joy, more love. It's just simple. You know, and, and sometimes we can say, well, I have all the joy and I have all the peace, but yet we get a sharp tongue with people if we don't get what we like. Someone tells us something we don't like to hear, then we want to snap back at them. That's not new. That's the old us coming forward. Sometimes we get upset with people and we think we have the right to tell them how we feel. Let it go. That's what being new is all about. Be new in all things. So we're going to pray. We're going to go to prayer. Uh, I had two more things I want to read here. I want you to be excited as we go to prayer. I want you to be excited as what God wants to do. Stop remembering what you used to do. And number four, remember this. God is speaking. Are you listening? He wants to do something great in your life. Fix your eyes on him and keep moving forward keep moving forward. Sometimes to move forward is to listen, is to listen. So we're going to pray. At this time, if you want to come up and have prayer at the altar, this side is just for you and God. If you want me to pray for you, I can pray for you over here.